Good evening, boys and girls. Time for another bedtime book review. I haven't done one of these since June, since I didn't do one during One Book July, but uh, today's book is requested by the gaming creator, uh, as in, in a comment on my last video. So if you have any videos, or sorry, if you have any books that you would like me to review in the next of these, go ahead and leave those in comments below. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at Rumble in the Jungle by Giles Andre and illustrated by by David uh, Wojciewicz, I believe. I um, I looked it up and then forgot. I'm part Polish, but I don't speak a lick of it. So this is a very cute little book about animals. So I'm gonna start by just reading it through and then give you my thoughts. <laughs> this paper is super cute, by the way. Rumble in the Jungle. There's a rumble in the jungle. There's a whisper in the trees. The animals are waking up and rustling the leaves. The hippos at the water hole, the leopards in his lair. The chimpanzees are chattering and swinging everywhere. Some animals are frightening and some are sweet and kind. So let's go to the jungle now and see who we can find. Chimpanzee. It's great to be a chimpanzee swinging through the trees. And if we can't find nuts to eat, we munch each other's fleas. Lion. The lion's the king of the jungle who quietly sits on his paws, but everyone quivers and shudders and shivers as soon as he opens his jaws. Elephant. It's great to be an elephant, all big and fat and round, and wander through the jungle just elephing around. Zebra. I could have been gray like a donkey, or brown like my cousin the mule, but instead I've got stripes, which my lady friend likes, since they make me look handsome and cool. Snake. The boa constrictor is a slippery snake who squashes then swallows his prey. He knows that it's not very friendly or kind, but they do taste much nicer that way. Giraffe. Some animals laugh at the gangly giraffe, but I hold my head up and feel proud. I really don't care when my head's in the air and my cheek's getting kissed by a cloud. Hippopotamus. Hello, I'm a big happy hippo. I sleep in the sun till I'm hot. And when I'm not sleeping, I mooch in the mud, which hippos like doing a lot. Crocodile. When animals come to the river to drink, I watch for a minute or two. It's such a delight to behold such a sight that I can't resist chomping a few. Rhinoceros. The ravenous rhino is big, strong, and tough, but his skin is all baggy and flappy, which means that there's plenty of room for his lunch, and that makes him terribly happy. Gazelle. No one can run half as quickly as me, the galloping gorgeous gazelle. I can leap up so high that my horns touch the sky, and I'm awfully pretty as well. Gorilla. The gorilla is big, black, and hairy, and the thing that he likes to do best is to look all ferocious and scary and wallop his great, great giant chest. Leopard. If you meet a hungry leopard prowling through the night, make sure you call him sir and be incredibly polite. Tiger. Beware of the terrible tiger. You don't always know when he's near, but his eyes shine like lights in the blackest of nights, and his growl makes you tremble with fear. The night has started falling, but the jungle never sleeps. The vultures circle slowly while the leopard softly creeps. And if you listen quietly, you might just hear the growl of a hungry pair of panthers who are still out on the prowl. The lions and their cubs are sleeping in their den, so let's leave them till tomorrow when we'll visit them again. The end. And then we've got zebra stripes again in the back. So you may have noticed something that I did. There is 
very, very little science in this book at all. The biology, the, um, uh, I don't know, zoology, I guess, is completely everywhere. Um, so it's called Rumble in the Jungle, but you'll notice here, like here, are monkeys in a jungle. Um, and this lion, it says, is the king of the jungle, which obviously we know is, I, I don't know where that came from, um, but he's shown here on a savanna um, with a vulture with a wig. So the art is super cute, but the collections here of seeing other zebras don't live in the jungle either nor do giraffes, but snakes do. So you've got a tree that looks like it could be from a rainforest, but then the giraffe is eating it. Um, so like I said, it's not based on like realistic science. So I guess you have to get past that and just decide it's just a fun little book about animals. Um, I don't know if it's harmful to teach kids that gazelles live in jungles or if they're not even gonna notice. Cause honestly, growing up, I don't think I really thought about it too much. Maybe I should have, but there you go. Um, but the art is super cute. It's kind of like a, um, I'm not sure if they're pastels, but it's kind of a crayon kind of a look um, and they're cute. And I think, um, I, I really like some of the details that are in here. Um, things like, so you've got big daddy gorilla here, it goes thud thud and then baby gorilla goes pat pat. <laughs> Cause he's like copying. Um, back on the giraffe page, I think it was. No, oh no, here on the zebra page. There's a little ant here on the, uh, eating a, a bite out of the leaf on the tree and it says munch. It's just like the tiny little things that like, the ant doesn't have his own poem, but he still has a little bit of personality, which is cute. Um, the first time I read through this, I was kind of jarred by the meter of the poem flipping back and forth between different styles. I've mentioned before, I'm not like an expert on poetry or on scanning poetry or writing poetry or anything. I do know a limerick when I hear one um, and there are a lot of those in here. And so a lot of them do match. Generally, I find that when there's two different animals on the same page, that at least the poems will match with each other across the same page so that they don't like switch to a different meter, a different number of syllables per line, that kind of thing. So that's helpful. Um, one thing I find really cool that I noticed um, between the very first page where you see here, um, it's, you know, setting up the whole premise. Um, we've got this jungle scene. There's an anthill over here. Um, and you see like parts of all the animals that we're going to see later. You see here a tiger paw, a lion tail, a gazelle horns, a giraffe's neck. Um, was there a cheetah in here? Anyway, there's a cheetah tail, gorilla monkey. The gorilla's in the tree. I don't know if gorillas can climb trees, but there you go. Um, so you see little pieces and that kind of I think it'd be really cute with a more advanced toddler than I have. Uh, my daughter's only 13 months right now and doesn't know her animals yet. But um, in another, you know, months, years uh, or so, she'll be able to go, oh, look, what's that? Oh, yeah, it looks like it's a, a gorilla. You know, it's a part of a giraffe. And let's, you know, it gets you thinking about what's coming. Um, and so you get to, you know, the revelation of what each animal is as you get to it. Then when you come to the back, it's the same scene mirrored and it's nighttime. So you can sort of spot the differences. There's still some body parts like this tiger tail. This tiger hasn't come completely out. Um, here's the cheetah, I think. And the monkeys are completely out though. And the, um, the lions you can see completely so, because like some of the animals we have already um, establish what they are so it's not like a mysterious thing anymore it's just sort of coming back to the same place that we started to wrap it all up in a nice circle um, even though we've got this vulture and I am pretty sure there are no vultures in the jungle but you know what I'm not a biologist I'm not a zoologist I'm not even a geo geograph a, what's a what do you call someone who studies geography let me know in comments. But in any case, I think that's a nice way to bookend all of the little poems. Um, one thing that I think, so I got this from the library. Normally I try to get board books because my daughter is very rough on her books. She loves turning pages. Um, we'll come in for bedtime 
and um, we'll try to read us through as much of the story as we can, but she wants to turn the pages back and forth. And once we finish the story, we'll sort of let her have at it for a little while. So I think this um, would be great in a board book for her because we'd be able to flip back and forth to different pages and you can read these pages in any order. Um, it, like there's no progression of a story element between the hippopotamus and the lion. You could just read them in any order. So if she you know, wants to just flip around and we can just read what's on the page to her, that would be great. The only problem and part of the reason that I don't have her here with me today is that she's not going to be okay with a library book made out of paper at this point in her development. Um, so I would, I would love to get this in a, uh, a board book if we purchased it for ourselves. Um, but I was able to get it from the library. So there we go. Patronize your local libraries. I think that that's all I have to say about this. If you've read it, um, let me know below what you think of it as well. Um, I think it's super cute and thank you so much for the gaming creator for the suggestion because I had not heard of this before. Um, I had not even heard of Giles Andre um, either but I know that he has a couple other books that are super cute um, and I've heard I believe it was like right after I checked this out there was a book of his that was in story time at the library. So there you go. I've been turned on to a new author to look out for. So I believe t next month's video is either going to be um, Good Morning, Good Night or There's a Monster at the End of This Book. Those are two that I would like to do unless you leave a comment below letting me know what you think I should do next because I'm always on the lookout for cute new storybooks, um, especially ones that we can get from the library and switch things up in our bedtime routine. So let me know below what you would like to see next. And I will see you guys in the next video on Thursday. Um, next Thursday's video is going to be a planner flip through. So look forward to that if you're into that. Otherwise, I'll see you on Sunday. All right.